Hello, this is Rob Hirschfeld. I'm here to show you a new, very exciting feature for Digital Rebar coming in version 3.8. This is Workflows as a First Class Citizen. We've been demonstrating uh, some workflows for a while, but uh, this really makes it a First Class Citizen with some very exciting capabilities um, and some real performance improvements, actually. Uh, I've already got the system staged up with a couple of machines in VirtualBox over here, so we'll, we'll see all that stuff go in a little bit. Um, and what I want to do is really jump right into showing you how this works. The system's already got a couple of things built in, so we can move right into building a workflow. Right now there is no workflow, so I'd have to go back to old style booting. I don't want to do that. I want to add a discovery workflow, uh, which I'm just going to call discover. Pretty straightforward here. And then build it using our drag and drop feature. So I can take my first stage discover. So stages in digital rebar are basically uh, what are the components of workflow. So a workflow drives a machine through specific stages and they can cross boots. We'll show that. So I want to discover, since I'm using VirtualBox, I want to actually discover um, the VirtualBox machine. Whoops. Let me clean things up a little bit. VirtualBox, discover, here. Uh, these are multi-NIC boxes, so I'm going to go ahead and add multiple NICs here. And then uh, I'm done at this point, so I, I don't want to be complete. What I want to do is I want to wait, so I'm going to tell it to be in Sledgehammer Wait. So in this case, I'm going through a basic uh, discovery image that we have. I'm going to inventory the box automatically. Uh, I'm going to set up the virtual box integrations and then get things going. Uh, and so before I can take advantage of that, what I, what I do want to do is go in and set my default workflow to discover. You have to build one before it lets you save it. Uh, that's the new feat that's the new field in in this area and if you're looking um, we actually have a, a flag called workflows to make sure that we the UX actually responds if you haven't enabled the workflow version yet so in this case what I want to do is I have the machines sort of ready to go I, there's no workflow set I need to go ahead and tell them that I want to use the discover workflow and then I'm gonna boot uh, if the first time you discover them it'll it'll default to the default workflow but once a machine is known you need to set its workflow it's going to drive behaviors so in this case um, it's uh, not happy with my power cycling oh I can't power cycle I have to power on so it's giving me appropriate responses um, in this case what's going on I'm booting a whole bunch of machines all at once I've got four machines that I had selected to boot uh, all of them simultaneously going through our discovery actions and uh, let me move them out of the way you can actually watch the process in the background so the UX has live updates and so as these machines boot what we're gonna see here is uh, we'll actually watch it walk through the the scheduling live on the system and this if you've seen digital rebar is pretty typical behavior for how things work um, the difference is that our workflow um, is now really a first-class citizen and so I can create that workflow and drive it through um, and now you're getting exactly the behavior that you would expect um, but this is just the tip of the iceberg um, really sort of table stakes for us about you know simplifying how machines boot and provision and things like that uh, it starts getting exciting when I look at extending this workflow a little bit so what I could do if I wanted to set the icons um, we can set machine metadata in this process. I'm not used to my screens being short. Uh, I could set some my machine metadata over here and go ahead and uh, set icons. I could then manually do it. If you'll notice, my machines didn't have any icon set. But more importantly, I want to provision some actual operating systems. What I'd like to do is I'd like to build uh, our image deploy system which is a stage based system and in this case I want to use uh, image as my icon make it a little cooler and I'll make that blue just some, some visual things that make it easier and for image deploy we have some pre-built stages uh, that do image deploy uh, image cloud knit um, and then once that's done we're, we're finished so we should tell that we're, we're complete one of the things that's different in this flow is that it actually shows me that there's a reboot so I go from being in my discovery image here into my um, into a reboot cycle and the system is smart enough to know to reboot when it reboots and it's identifying it same thing would happen if I did my cent uh, CentOS install so here's my CentOS that one should have a Linux icon 
Yay, we'll make it uh, per uh, we'll do blue also. No sense in being fan using the fancy colors right now. And if I wanted to do a CentOS install, I would start with a CentOS install. That looks pretty good. Uh, you know, it'd be really handy to have my SSH keys involved. That looks excellent. So I'm going to have my SSH keys as part of that. Discover automatically pulls in SSH keys. Um, it would be certainly handy. Um, let's see, I don't have a lot of other choices, so I'm done with this. Uh, I'll be complete here. If I wanted to, I could add in some other, other capabilities um, into the system, but for, oh, I need a runner service. So in this, in, in this case, uh, since I'm installing the system, but I want to keep control, I'm going to install the runner, um, and I'm going to do the same thing over here in these environments. So what the runner service does is it lets uh, Digital Rebar stay in control. Without the runner service, uh, what would happen is, is that we would um, not be able to change stages as easily. We'd be required to reboot uh, to drive a stage change. Uh, and I'll show you exactly what, what it, the difference is. What you'll see here in our install process is that uh, in this case we're actually aware that there's a reboot before we go into the final cycle. So we're going to install the operating system and then reboot into the final. Um, so the, the workflows are multi-boot workflows. And I could make three or four boots. I could add burn-in processes. Uh, let me show you how this works, and then we'll talk about some of the extensions. So I've got uh, four machines waiting around. If I come in, pick one of them, and say, you know what, I'd really like you to start the image deploy process and go, it's going to immediately begin that workflow. Uh, so that's node one over here. We're actually doing the work on the image deploy. You can see it running through the, the process right now. Um, and as it goes, we're going to get live updates. So I can look at this individual machine and check out its stage flow. So these are all the, that, this is the workflow decomposes into a whole bunch of stages. Those stages are going to be live updated as the system goes through its boot cycle. Um, and then when it finishes, we'll go back into the complete. So this machine is literally installing CentOS. Um, it's going to be finished. It's, re it's installed CentOS, it's rebooting, and it's almost done. Um, if I wanted to do a similar thing over here, but install CentOS in the normal netboot uh, that's baked into those stages, I select go here. Here's the machine uh, over there doing that work. And it's going through a CentOS install process. Uh, and once again, you can watch it go through the, the process. You get live updates as that process progresses. So this is the uh, CentOS 7 installer uh, doing a regular netboot. Uh, this one is, is literally, uh, it's at least five times longer. I can do four complete image deploys in the time it takes me to do one CentOS install on the same machine. Um, significant uh, speed up. So this is, this is what that, that CentOS uh, process would look like. And it's, if I look at the node level here, we're actually waiting for it to complete the first stage, and then it'll progress pretty quickly. But you can see literally the full uh, range of actions that have to be taken, including stage changes, boot and env changes. And the system's smart enough to know when a boot env changes, that triggers a reboot. And so it'll go through that entire process for you as the, as the stages progress. Um, so I've got those two machines. If I'm ready, if this machine is done and I'm ready to reclaim it, I can just simply take its workflow back into a discover workflow. Uh, system in the background rebooted for me automatically, uh, and then it's going to go through this process. So it's going to reboot, discover, and be cleaned up. Now I might decide that um, that's not enough, and that what I actually want to be able to do is do, say, a burn-in process or a decommissioning process. Uh, in those cases, what I want to do is I want to go back into, say, the content catalog, pick a burn-in or one of the other advanced uh, content packages uh, that we've been burn building. I'm going to pick tip for this rather than the, the current release. Now if I go into my workflows, I could go into dis I could go in and I could add a new workflow that says uh, burn in. And let's see, I could pick uh, something appropriate for burn in. I don't know, flames. That looks like that's actually an ink drop. Um, but it's good. So here's burn in and then I could I could add, what, let's do it this way. So what I really want is I want a discover workflow that includes burn-in. So I can just clone discover. There's burn-in. 
get my drop icon again save that so now what I could do for this one um, is I can take my burn in flow and I can I can decide I want to do a little bit of extra work here uh, so I could pick burn in and add it into the workflow uh, process um, and let's see I could I could also change my metadata there's some ways ways to show you how those things work to tell you that it's actually burned in and, and process um, uh, I could also say for this one I want to do a LLDP discovery, which takes a little bit more time, so we don't always include it in discover workflows. But if I was to do that, now I could take another one of these machines and put it through the burn-in process. Um, and what you'll notice with this one is uh, it didn't. it's not going to require a reboot because uh, everything is in the sledgehammer. So it's just going to start that process, um, build the system up, and, and make things go um, as, as we need it to do its thing. Um, so pretty straightforward for building a workflow. That, notice that meta icon thing, um, set the icon here, and once it reaches that stage here, it'll set the icon for the server also. Um, I like to do a lot of work where we, we actually drive icons back and forth as things progress. It gives a lot of good feedback to the user since you get live updates for that. Um, so at, at this point, we've gone through a system where we've built a couple of different workflows. Um, this is a very powerful feature. Uh, it uses the stage the stage systems that we've built, um, and from those um, you can drive down into tasks. So you can actually build your own stages that are composed of tasks. Tasks then are composed. You can put text in, or that you can use templates, and they're really just Bash or PowerShell if you're using Windows um, scripts that use template expansion. So we have we have whole videos on training this. Um, I meant this to be a short sort of. Here is, here is what a uh, provisioning uh, system looks like. Uh, and the thing that gets really exciting to me is that once, once we have these workflows built, uh, simply changing the workflow is enough to start the whole process going. So you can literally drive uh, intent-based physical infrastructure by saying, I want to put a machine into this workflow. Uh, if you go into a profile, um, then you could actually be setting parameters and changing it. So if I wanted to change this machine's image, I could do it at the profile level, or I could set a parameter on the machine itself that would change the image that got deployed. Um, and then set a workflow and let the machines go. Uh, and the system behind the scenes will take care of the whole process. If I needed to do multiple boots, uh, I could build a workflow in here that would actually take through multiple cycles. Um, I can show you what that would look like very quickly. So I could take my discover workflow, I can clone that one, and I can do um, inventory and then to CentOS. So if I wanted to go and install my inventory system over here, and I said, you know, I want to discover my systems, but I don't want to stop here. What I really would like to do is I'd like to go directly into my CentOS install. And then I, after the CentOS install, I do, do want to have my runner. And then at the end of having my runner, I would like to uh, tell, every, tell myself that I'm complete. So in this case, what we've now done is we've gone through an inventory cycle that will literally uh, set everything, boot, in, boot CentOS machines, discover them, and do it. And if I wanted that to be my default workflow, I could just come in here and say inventory and CentOS is my default workflow. And then when new machines were booted, they would go through that workflow process automatically. And all it would take for me to adjust it is I could come in and I can uh, work with, uh, let me show you what these look like. Um, they're just JSON objects, they're very simple. They're just a, a list, an array of the, of the stages that you want to run in order. And the system figures out how to, how to map and manage that process. Um, but because of this change, you can have workflows that use the same stage in different ways. So in this case, I have two CentOS installs, and I could manage it. Um, there's, even, there's some other clever, fun um, ways that we can use the system uh, to make things go. But this is the basic uh, components of how we've implemented workflows for Digital Rebar. Um, I hope this is, is interesting and helpful to you. Uh, you can see our burning going through uh, memory stress right now. Um, so, uh, and that you'll take some time and, and get to know Digital Rebar. This is, this is pretty advanced, incredibly advanced capability for a provisioning infrastructure. Uh, 
but we work really hard to make this a type of simple thing that you can spend an hour with Digital Rebar and, and actually start building your own workflows, really changing the way you operate your infrastructure. Um, everything I'm showing you, of course, is, is API drivable, uh, and you can manage it using the APIs and JSON or the command lines, um, literally a command line interface, set machine into a workflow and uh, commit, and you would literally be booting machines into different prototypes. Um, actually, I'm gonna do that as a, as a bonus at the end of the, this video. Uh, hopefully you're still with me through this, um, but it, this is sort of fun and it's worth noting. So in this case, uh, I'm going to drive this. We have this node one right here. It's good as that. Uh, actually, I can do it all from from that. So if I want, I can say DRP CLI uh, machines list uh, machines show name uh, name node one. So this is the JSON response from node one. Let me go back to bulk actions where we get a little bit more visibility. Um, so over here, now what I can do is I can say node machine node one and I can do an update and I can say that I want to set the workflow to discover. And if I make that change, it's going to go through. It's, it made the change. It rebooted the machine, uh, and the system's actually going going along. So, if I'm an operator at my desk and I need to recover a machine or change it, uh, and I have the credentials, some, these are my credentials already in my my uh, command line. I can literally go through and take a machine, reset it, and drive it into whichever workflow I want it. So I could build different personalities. I could build different types. Um, easily script. Uh, very comprehensive changes uh, into the system um, that would allow me to manage uh, a lot of a lot of um, machines in a very automated, uh, very clear way to go way. Um, and of course, everything we're doing is going to generate events um, and trackable log enti ent ent entries. So as systems work, uh, we can actually get real data back about what's going on in the system. Hope this was helpful. Uh, it certainly went a little bit longer because there was some, some bonus features that I wanted to show you. Um, the best thing is try this out yourself. This is easy for you to replicate. This has been Rob Hirschfeld uh, with another Digital Rebar video.